So we've spent a lot of this unit talking about law of sines and law of cosines. And there are two major parts of doing some geometry and dealing with triangles and using your trig to deal with those triangles. And we saw how that worked without right triangles. Well, there's another thing that we can do with trig functions and not have to worry about right triangles. And that's find area of triangles. Now, area is something you've done before, okay? You should know your area formula is half the base times the height. We've done that in our own classes, some even. So let's take a look at some area problems. In fact, you know what? Just for fun, start out by finding the area of these three triangles, okay? I'll call this triangle number one, triangle number two, and triangle number three. So find the area of them using half the base times height, if possible. Go. So shouldn't have been too difficult. Uh, the first triangle, very simple for an area. So my area equals half. My base is five. My height is 12. So that ends up being half of 12 is six. Six times five is 30. That was easy. For, for triangle number two, again, half the base times height. The base is the entire 20 here, okay? The height is eight. So half of 20 is 10, 10 times eight is 80. Now when I come to this one, half the base, maybe I make my base 15, but here's the problem, is 12 the height? Remember, heights have to make right angles. Another word for height is altitude. So 12 is not my height. My height has to come in this way, and I don't know what that is. So this one is not possible. Okay. So this is again where trig comes and helps us. So let's see what we could do with this if I knew a little more information. Okay. Not the height, but let's say I knew an angle. Okay. Now still it looks like an unusual problem. Again, I'm looking at this going, ooh, two sides, an angle. I could find the other side. I could use my law of sines. But that's not what we're worried about. Plus, finding side GH here, finding that side, still isn't going to help us get the height because we still don't know the altitude. The side I really need to know to be able to find the height of this problem is I need to know this altitude coming in here. I need to know what that height is. In fact, I'll call it H for height. But look at what we've just created. I have just made a right triangle here. And I know that with right triangles, I can use my basic trig. I have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So that sounds like a sine problem. The sine of 35 is opposite over hypotenuse. Cross multiply. So the height is 12 sine of 35. Now that I know the height, I can go to my area formula. The area equals one half the base. Now remember the base is the entire base here. So that's 15 times the height, which I just found to be that. Now things are coming together. I could use my trig to help me find that. Let's look at that in a more general term. This is what mathematicians do. They run into a problem with numbers, they try it out. They might even try it a few times, but then they go, you know what? I think I might be onto something. Let me generalize this. Let me look at my basic triangle ABC, okay? And if I wanna find the area of this triangle ABC, again, I need the height. So I'm gonna draw my height in there, but that's okay because I can find my height using one of those angles. So the sine, of angle C is the opposite, which is the height, over the hypotenuse, which is side A. And if I cross multiply, I get the height is side A times the sine of C. Ah, now I know my height. I can get my area because the area of the triangle is the half, the area of the base, which in this case happens to be B, times the height, which is A sine of angle C. Or I could rewrite this 
as area equals one half a b sine of c. I never need to know the height. This allows us, trig allows us now to calculate areas of triangles when I don't even know the height. I just need two sides and the angle in between them. Hmm, gee, that sounds a lot like side angle side. So if I know that kind of information, we can go right back to this original problem and I can say, you know what? I don't even need to go through all that finding the height because I know now that my area is one half the base of the triangle times the other side times the sine of 35. Basically what I need is two sides and the angle between it, and I can find my area, okay? Might as well do that real quick. So let me pull up my calculator again. Do, 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 Desmos, the calculator turn. So I'm pulling up my Desmos. Of course, I wanna make sure I'm in degrees. Okay, uh, let me minimize this to the side so we can see a little easier. So let's see, I wanna get, uh, let's see what my information was here. So I need one half times 15 times, so I can actually just enter that all into here. One half, love that, that's nice, times 15 times 12, that's the two sides, times sine of the angle between them. And there we go. The area is nothing more than 51.6219. There's my area of the triangle. So easy. Well, you need a calculator, but yes, this is not very difficult at all. So let's try one. Go ahead and calculate the area of this one, okay? So I'm gonna set up my formulas. Uh, here's what I've got. I've got two sides and an angle between them. Ooh, I don't know the angles. How am I gonna get an angle here? Ah, we can get an angle using our law of cosines. Because I remember, I have three sides, I need an angle. You can really do whatever angle you want. Uh, let's do angle P, okay, just for fun. So I need to use my law of cosines to get my angle. So I'm gonna find angle P. So that's going to be 17 is my lonesome side. So 8 squared plus 23 squared minus 2 times 8 times 23 cosine of angle P. So again, I know three sides. I need one more to get that angle. Make that look like a 2. So I'm going to go to my calculator now. Uh, in fact, let's take that over to the side and let's get some... Yeah, let's slide it over some so I can see what's going on. And let's get some calculations, okay? So 17 squared is pretty easy. 17 squared, 289. So I got 289 and 8 squared plus 23 squared. So 8 squared plus 23 squared is 593. Now, 2 times 8 times 23 gives me 368 cosine of P. I tell you what, you finish this off and tell me what the angle is. Okay, so hopefully you finish this off properly. 289 minus the 593 gives me negative 304. Finishing up my work real quick. Uh, I need to now divide that. So divide by 368. Hey, notice I didn't type the negatives in because I know that a negative over a negative is a positive. So I kind of just made my life a little easier. And now I need to, so P will be cosine inverse of 0 0.8261. So I need my cosine inverse, cosine inverse, uh, I'm gonna copy this, and I get P to be about 34 degrees. There we go, not too bad. 
except that's not what we're trying to solve for, right? Because I want the area of this triangle. So I still got a little bit of work to do. So now that I know this is 34 degrees, I need to make sure I choose the correct sides, okay? So I need to choose the eight and the 23 because they're the sides that make the angle I know. So I'm gonna say my area, I'm gonna change color so we can see it a little nicer here. My area will equal one half of eight times 23 times the sine of 34. And I can punch all of that right into my calculator. Okay, so let's punch that into my calculator real quick. Let me see what I wrote over here. So that's gonna be one half of, yeah, let's use parentheses, eight, 23, sine of 34. And there we go. So my area equals 51.4457. And there we go. So this is not very difficult. You know your formula. Sometimes you got to find some extra information. Again, that's the challenging part of mathematics. Realizing, hey, I don't have something I know, but I know how to get there. So here's your job. Right now, I want you to find the area of each of these triangles, round the answer to the nearest tenth. Okay, go for it. All right. So finding the area of these triangles, I have all the information right here. Um, so my area, whoops, got to get the pen. Area equals one half, six times eight, sine of 87. Okay, so you can punch that into your calculator real quick. So that's going to be, I got that to be rounded to the nearest tenth, 23.8. 967. So I'm going to round that to 20. Ooh, that's going to round that to a zero, which actually rounds that to 24.0 to the nearest tenth. Looking at the next problem. So again, one half, six times five, sine of 140. Notice we're using different triangles this time. We're not just doing our sine and cosine of acute angles. So that's going to be that times the sine of 140, and I get that area to be 9.6418, rounded to the nearest tenth is 9.6. These are pretty simple problems. They're just rote doing the same thing over and over again. So here, area equals one half, eight times three, sine of 98. So that's gonna be, equal to 11.8832 to the nearest tenth, that's 11.9, okay? The last one, seven times four sine of 96. So that's gonna be, whoops, that is not what I wanted to write. Let's see, that's gonna be 14 uh, sine of 96 gives me 13.9233, or simply 13.9, okay? So that's all there is. I'm not even worried about these last few problems because they're basically the same thing. Two sides, six and two, with an included angle of 10, just to help you draw that if you had a problem. So six and two, included angle. So that's the one in between them. That's it, same problems, okay? So your homework is going to be doing some problems with the area triangles. That's it. Have a good night.